r slash entitled parents, episode 41. Entitled parent tries to get me to have sex and get pregnant to cure my mental issues. Hey, so I got reminded of a lady at my job who seriously tried to get me to have sex and have a baby. So I'm asexual, been that way for years. I've also been diagnosed with unspecified psychosis, depression, and anxiety. The chance of me having sex is slim and the chance of me having kids is even slimmer. My coworkers know about my mental issues, I ended up in a mental hospital for a bit, and they wondered where I was, and this one parent was trying desperately for me to have sex, because sex would cure my depression and a baby would cure my psychosis. Why is she entitled? Because she has three kids, that she only kept around for a check, and blew all her money on drugs. But she's apparently has enough knowledge, to know how to cure mental illness. She also tried hitting on guys young enough to be her kids. And no matter how many times I told her six, wouldn't cure me, she never let it drop. She finally got locked up, and after the second time her kids were taken away. But having kids worked out so well for her, so I should just listen. I snapped at Karen, mobile, let me start off with the fact I have been skateboarding for well over 15 years and anything that could happen at a skate park I have probably seen happen from super awesome cool tricks to pot smokers, fights, overall counterculture debauchery and a fair few entitled parents who think their little angels could do no wrong. As I have been growing older and more experienced two major things can go wrong at a skate park to cause injury. First going bigger and higher than your personal skill level second small unsupervised children being oblivious to the dangerous fast paced environment around them. Inevitably causing a last second ditch effort to not literally plow them over and send them straight to the emergency room. A counter argument to the last statement might be to watch closer to these obviously more vulnerable people, in all honesty that works a vast majority of the time. Small children are unpredictable by nature, combine this with a dangerous environment, can cause chaos at and very short hard to react to bursts. That being said, let's get to the entitled parent and going to call Karen from here. It's about 4.30pm in central US at a scatter park with a full time dedicated security detail. This park is a part of a much larger complex of parks in the area that has been privately funded. I'm with a couple of friends and the skate park is very busy, it's the first nice Saturday where everything is dry the sun is out and warm with not a cloud in the sky after two weeks of constant rain. I'm a local at this park and know at least 10 to 15 other locals by name or nickname. Due to the nice day and beautiful weather, randoms decide it's time to leave the nest for the afternoon and visit the local parks. Brad hash one is on a skateboard, BR80-2 is on a warm-up board razor scooter. At first I'm paying them no mind, they are not bothering me or anyone I'm with. As time goes on the Tabrat brothers are increasingly annoying some of the younger locals who voice their discontent. A couple more incidents of them being told to not snake. Cut off, other people Brad Hash 1 says in a very arrogant tone that's my brother you're talking to at one of the locals. This is where I felt it necessary to now voice my discontent as I think they are in the wrong, and I don't want two brothers picking a fight. I told Brad Hash 1 that Brad Hash 2 needs to watch out for other people. Brad Hash 1 stuck his nose up at me. I shrugged this off, I would have done the same thing if a stange man told me something like that as his age. I'm not an authority figure he doesn't have to listen to me, and I get that. At one point one of the brats decided to sit down and lay on a ramp that is skated on very frequently. This caused not only myself, but a couple of the local kids to say something. The brat moves deeper into the pool area. It's about a 100 yards of connected ramps going from 2 feet to 15 foot ramps. I'm now keeping a closer eye on them due to these recurring issues with other kids their age 15 minutes or so passes and him going for a trick at full speed rolling into a part of the 8 foot section from above Brad Hash 2 was down there headed towards the shallow end. I feel it's safe to continue with my trick attempt right as I've crossed the point of no return on rolling into this very steep ramp the brat does a 180 on me and turns back towards the deep end causing me to kick my board away slam shoulder first into the opposite part of the half pipe and loudly and colorfully yell at him to watch out the only time I used profanity in this entire situation. 
Brad Hash 1 is now helping Brad Hash 2 climb out of the 10 foot section because they do not want to cross my path again and also accusing me of not watching out. I know you're not talking to me. B1. Yes I'm talking to you. You almost hit my brother. You two have been constantly in the way all day. I have been skating longer than you've been alive. If I wasn't watching out you'd have a broken arm or worse right now. So shut your mouth. I'm very angry at this point and want nothing to do with these children and I'm being vocal about it. I do not enjoy yelling at children. It does not make me feel like a big man only an asshole. Scatter parks are dangerous enough without having to dodge unpredictable children. After this exchange of words they run off to mama bear. I say to myself go on tell my your mom will yell at her too. I'm livid by this point and honestly just want to skate. Sure enough within a minute or two Karen comes stomping over to me all huffy and puffy. Can I talk to you for a minute? And LT tries to get in my way and GT, no and LT, dodges, and rolls into the 8 feet half pipe and GT. I tell her this, because I know what she's trying to do, and I do not want this confrontation, so I go to the other side of the 8 feet half pipe, so she cannot get in my face or touch me. Pulling a full entitled parent move I've seen before when somebody else had to deal with this scenario. She sits on the obstacle I have been skating for the last hour or so, where the brats have routinely been snaking people. Karen, what gives you the right to talk to my kids like that? Me now furious at the situation and going to snap not wanting to deal with this after already having told her no I do not want to talk to her I laid into her loud enough that she couldn't get a word in without screaming over me. Your kids are in the way and creating a dangerous environment for themselves and everyone around them by being oblivious to the flow of the scatter park. I'm not responsible for their safety and should not be expected to be watching your dumb children. Karen now screaming back at me, but they're my kids. I cut her off before she can say another word I don't care. I do not care if they're your kids. Karen, but I care, if you care then you should watch them closer, their safety is your responsibility not mine. I should not feel obligated to care for an out of control orgasm you decided to keep. I have been skating longer than they've been alive and to make me supervise your brats is not okay. Karen is clearly shocked at this point and has no words for me. She decides to scurry off to the fat meth mouth security guard they have stationed at the gate who is usually only looking up from Candy Crush to yell at teenagers for vaping or smoking cigarettes. I explained the situation to the security guard in a calm voice after she managed to hobble over to me. Siding with me she and talking with a couple other parents of locals I know she only said to bring any issue like that to security first. I agreed and went back to skating. Karen and her brats disappeared after this. TLDR. Brats in everyone's way. Karen tries to yell at me. I lay down the facts loudly and angrily. Security gets involved and sides with me. Karen and brats disappear. Edit. Thanks for the silver kind stranger this is my first reddit award ever. Ek attempts to steal from store so M yells at me and my kaoka, repost from r slash entitled kids. Backstory, so I work at a fairly large farm store in my town as they pay pretty fairly, I'm at the register and my co-worker is locking up the hunting goods section, they have a giant metal gate, like you would see in the front of a mall when the person manning, that area goes home for the night. Then, a young man, maybe 14 to 15, steps through the sliding glass door with his mother, maybe 35 to 37, claiming they need roofing nails. Characters, me, the opco, Kawakar M, entitled Mother Ek, entitled Kid M, manager the aftermath, so the mom and son walked, in claiming to be looking for some nails, so I tell them what aisle they are in politely. Ko was walking around with his notebook writing down stocks that we needed more of, and I seemed like a normal knight. That is until I hear from a squeaky puberty voice, hey put me down you pervert. Ko, give me back the knife, and I'll let go. Eck, no. You get the hell off of me, before I call the cops. Ko, I can call them right now, and get you in trouble for shoplifting. Eck, mom. This 60 year old man is trying to kidnap me. Ko, I'm 19. Not 60. Just because I dyed my hair white for Halloween doesn't mean I'm 60. M, 
Get the fuck off my baby before I get the manager. So Ko presses his walkie talkie button and I walk over to the aisle and see if I can assess the situation. M. R. Good. Are you the manager? Me, I'm sorry but I'm going to have to ask your son to give back the knife and for you to let go of my cow walker or I'm going to have to call the authorities. M. Why is a 15 year old girl working here? Don't you have somewhere else to go? There are firearms and sharp things here. At this point I'm starting to get a little frustrated at her, because even though I look young I'm 17 and nearly everyone assumes I'm 16 to 17 except for a few like M. Me, ma'am, I've been raised around hunting, and knives my whole life, selling them and helping people with them is no different, I'm also sorry to point out that I'm 17, not 15. M, then show me your ID. Me, I don't have to show you anything. Then I press the button for the manager to come to our aisle. M, hello op and co, what's the problem here? Me, well this mother and son are harassing us, and the son has stolen one of the niem. This man is trying to kidnap my baby and I think this young woman here is being forced to work. M, I'm glad to say that op is of age and co is not trying to kidnap your baby, but I heard over the radio chatter that a knife has been stolen. M, this knife was on the floor unpackaged, so I thought it was someone's that was dropped. M, so you give it to your teenage son? M, well duh. These perverts are always looking for kids to take. Me, me and co have been close since our parents met, and he can barely stand his brother, why would he want another kid? M, probably to sell for his drug addiction. Co, I don't have a drug addiction and I think it's time I just take this knife out of your son's hand, so this whole issue is over. Soon after Co takes the knife and hands it to the manager M, if this was found on the floor, then why is the plastic tip still on it? M, ah. Uh, I guess it's just from the guy being safe. Me, ma'am I strongly recommend you leave before we contact the police. Soon after she leaves grumbling about having to go to a bigger brand, starts with an L and its logo is a blue house. M, you fucking city dorks go back to playing your games. Me, ma'am, I've been raised in the country and I will die in the country, you're not country, because you're literally carrying around a hydro flask, just shut up and get out of here. M, you disrespectful bitch. You need to be taught how to respect your elders. Me, was that a threat? Because I can easily pull up the cameras and fork it over to the police. M and X scamper hour of the building, and we lock the door, so we can clean up for the night. Thanks for reading. I'm currently getting it all from Ko, and he told me about the convo that ensued after I heard the kid scream. I'll try to keep you updated. Edit, oh my lord, thanks for 1000 upvotes. Entitled parents try to make me into a maid slash servant. So back to my church, filled with entitled parents, and my sister who is about to graduate. And I'm a year behind her, so I'm in the 11th grade. In the church, they hold a party for the graduating class. Really nice except the 11th graders are supposed to provide the food. They had an excuse, but I didn't mind that. But what I did mind was the 11th graders were expected to sever the adults there like they were slaves. No we weren't paid and we got the leftover food after everyone had picked at it and was cold. And we were told to be thankful. We were supposed to run around offering drinks, cleaning up after everyone and such. I wasn't having that. This church already thought my family was trash and I knew it would just tickle them pink to see my acting like a slave. So I told my nana I would bring food but not serve. She said she didn't care and it was fine. So I went with my sister and stuck with her. I bought in the food, went to the sermon, and went with my sister when she went to eat. We basically stuck together the whole time because like I said they looked down on my family and a lot of them didn't feel like asking my sister about her plans for school or if she's moving or about her future. But do you know who they did talk to? Me. Why aren't you serving? It's your job. You have to serve. Multiple adults were distressed because I wasn't doing what they wanted. 
I just looked at them and said if you wanted a maid slash servant, you should have paid for one. They went silent and walked away, tail between their legs. Which only confirmed my thoughts that they only saw me as workforce. And before you say, didn't that happen when you were a 12th grader? No it didn't. The 11th graders brought food, but my class absolutely refused to let them serve us. We even hid in the kitchen to avoid it. We got our own food and drink. The adults however had no problem with the kids severing them. And why am I posting so much? I'm supposed to be cleaning my apartment, and I'm avoiding it. Ek throws multiple temper tantrums, and then is called an angel by M. This might sound pretty fake, but I swear this is real. So my mom is really close with this family and I'm pretty much forced to hang out with their son, Akarek. I should mention that M said we have to treat Ek like a brother and follow him wherever goes and must have his way. This one weekend about a year ago me and my friend went on a bike ride with his cousin and of course, Ek had to join in. Anyway, we all met up in the park and hung out there for a while until lunch we all wanted to go to Subway, except Ek who threw a temper tantrum demanding Starbucks, so we biked over to the plaza and went to get Starbucks we were approaching Starbucks and there a red light, so we told him to wait but of course, he didn't listen and ran the red, so we had to chase after him doing, so we almost died about two times we arrived at Starbucks. And the Ek had no money and demanded we gave him some, but we only had enough for ourselves, so we respectfully said we couldn't, so we had ridden to his house, so he could break into the piggy bank instead, he starts screaming at his parents to give him money, and it got so bad they had to close the door, after about a half hour he came out with cash, to get his Starbucks he arrived there, and he ordered one of their sandwiches, I forgot which one, and they were out, so surprise surprise he threw another tantrum he finally cooled off and chose something else we ate our meals and went back to the park. Ek found a forest opening and shot in that direction we followed him and it turns out it was a pretty nice trail there was another opening and it didn't look the cleanest but of course, he went in there we were in there for a while and he stumbled across a barn with a liquid inside of it my friend who is a germaphobe freaked out. Ek saw this and started saying he would pour it on him my friend got on his bike and before he could Ek poured the whole thing on him my friend freaked out and started screaming at Ek once he cooled down he went to his house to drop him off and tell his mom what had happened we arrived at Ek slash M residence and told them what had happened. I'm going to put this in dialogue now to give you a rough idea of how this went down me, hi M your son had been throwing fits left and right and poured what seems to be drugs on my friend. M, I don't see the problem here he was just fooling off with you guys trying to have fun me, but it could have been drugs and very poisonous, it also doesn't excuse him from throwing temper tantrums. M, why won't you let him enjoy himself, again, I don't see the problem here. M, and why didn't you give him money, to buy food you have to put my little angel in front of yourself at this point, I couldn't reason with her, so I told I have to be back home now, and left and that's pretty much where this story ends. I have more stories for this specific Ek and M, if I see people enjoy this, I'll share more of these. You don't need that blanket. Typical on mobile warning. I couldn't decide if it should go here or r slash sing because you know the cast. Karen equals EM, spawn, 5 years old, equals EK, Mr. SQUIR, Ariel equals DH, and SQUIR, Ariel equals ME. So we were at a charity tournament that had a basket raffle. You buy tickets, put one in the paper bag, and keep the other, so you know your numbers. Some really nice items, but we will focus on a soft as a cloud handmade blow lap afghan. DH won the blanket. Enter Karen. M. Asterisk M A R C H I N G over. You know Spawn really wanted to win that. Eck, yeah all my tickets went into that one asterisk L O O K S over with crocodile tears at DH asterisk me. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe we. M. You should give it to her Yano. She wanted to win. DH, but look, this is perfect to cover my legs in the wheelchair. Ek, asterisk W-A-I-L-I-N-G-S-T-A-R-T-S asterisk M, well spawn, I guess you don't get it. 
Some people don't realize you are just a kid asterisk g-l-a-r-i-n-g at me asterisk me. I'm sorry spawn egg. Well you didn't pay for it I wanted it. Me. Well, we did buy tickets so yes, we did pay for it. Eck, just make your own and starts to reach for it. Me, asterisk s-t-a-n-d-s in front of d-h to block h-e-r asterisk no. D-h, spawn, I won this, you can't just take it. M, come along spawn, you know we are broke, we will skip, having dinner and I will buy you a blanket at the store asterisk g-l-a-r-e-s at the two of us asterisk d-h, asterisk q-u-i-e-t-l-y, after they walked away ya know, I would have given it to her, if she didn't demand it. T-L, doctor husband won an afghan, kid wanted it. Kid didn't get it. Karen tries to wait shame me for type 1. Cast, me, me m, Karen, I have type 1 diabetes, the type where you are born with it, and so I was at my friend's house when he wanted to know if I wanted to sleep over, I said sure, but I needed to get a few things first, mind you this the 90s, and I'm 12 in this story, so I grabbed my Game Boy, my pillow. Super Mario 3, Pokemon Yellow Edition, and my diabetes medicine, now onto the story. We started by watching A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back, and The Return of the GD, then we watched them in the opposite order, to catch any easter eggs or something like that. It is now midnight, so M asks me if I want any snacks, so I say yes, but nothing with high sugar levels. M asks why, so I tell her that I have diabetes, that was a mistake, now she starts talking about how I shouldn't be eating so much, that I get diabetes at age 12, so I thought she had a point, and she just didn't know what kind of diabetes it was, so I told her it was just type 1, and she started talking about how she doesn't care if it's type 1, type 2 or even type 4. So I had to explain to her what it was, and that calmed her down, then she threw out my medicine thinking I didn't need it, because my body was already used to it, or some other bullshit I don't really remember. So I ended up going home, telling my mom and still being friends with the kid, but never going back to his house. If you made it this far, thanks for reading, this is my first actual post on reddit, I've been a lurker for a while, and finally found this subreddit, and decided to tell you guys this horror show of a sleepover. Monstrous pachyderm of an entitled mom tries to crush my twig thin manager over happy meal toy. Sorry on mobile, I will do my best. M, entitled monster mom, EGM, mom of MM, manager this happened in 1996, but I remember, as if it was 5 minutes ago. I'm on register, M and I are playing around BC we are teens, and have crushes on each other, in comes M pushing EGM looking on a mission, like they want to fight. M to my manager, you have any more of the incredible Hulk toy figures? M, sorry, not right now, what we have, is what's here till the truck comes, but other MCDS might, M cuts him off, as she tries to launch her blubbering heap of flesh over the counter and grabs M by collar, you will find me that goddamn toy. She started going on about she's a collector and we're hiding her mom's items on purpose, years later find out EGM is a McDonald's memorabilia collector, and won't leave, until she can be escorted to the storage shed to prove we are out of the toy. She finds a substitute and leaves with EGM ranting insults at us. Someone called the cops, but there wasn't much to be done, except give her a warning. She was back a few years later long after I quit, launch day of the teeny beeny bears from different countries. She only lied to customers walking, in telling them to leave, because she was buying them all. She got a surprised Pikachu face, when the manager wouldn't let her, her son is bad too. I'll write about him soon.